All right, here with Kevin Schofield of SCC Insight, that's Seattle City Council Insight, sccinsight.com. Uh, looks like there's some action today at the federal courthouse, man. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so uh, the uh, Black Lives Matter and ACLU plaintiffs in the city of Seattle this morning uh, filed a motion together to Judge Jones saying, um, uh, basically, we want to wrap a bunch of, bunch of stuff up here. So they, they basically said, we've agreed to some changes to the, the preliminary injunction on crowd control weapons. And I'll run through those in a sec. And they said, you know, if we, if we make these changes, then we can actually forget about that whole contempt thing. Let's just kind of put that aside. And basically, we can just sort of what they call stay these proceedings, just kind of pause them, stick it in the freezer. Um, while Judge Robart figures out what he's going to do with the city council's crowd control ban, crowd control weapon ban. So let's let Judge Robart work that out first, then we can sort of pull this back off the shelf and decide what we want to do. So here's for the meantime what they agreed on in terms of changes to the, the crowd control um, uh, restraining order that, that Judge Jones issued. They said, uh, they basically made a bunch of updates in it. So they said, um, SPD can't use chemical irritants or projectiles to try to reroute a protest unless it's necessary to really prevent an immediate threat of physical harm or to respond to a specific act of violence. So they can't just say, yeah, we want all the protesters to go this way and use crowd control weapons to do that. They said that um, if SPD is going to use crowd control weapons, they have to issue a warning, a verbal warning ahead of time and give people a chance to respond and to leave first before they do it. They can't target journalists, legal observers, or medics. And the, the, the update says how SPD is supposed to recognize journalists and legal observers and medics. Um, you know, so long as journalists, observers, and medics are actually, you know, following the law and um, aren't, you know, are, are doing the things we'd expect them to do and not, you know, sort of actively trying to take, play, you know, take part in the protest and those sorts of things. Um, uh, the city won't be held liable if basketball, basketballs are uh, directed like to an open space near the people trying to target as opposed to actually targeting the people directly. And um, it says, and this is an important thing, um, SPD can't, if, it, if SPD declares a protest to be an unlawful assembly or a riot, that doesn't exempt them from all the requirements of this. Right, they're still responsible to follow all these rules. And it says explicitly that um, chemical irritants and projectiles will not be displayed, in, uh, de deployed indiscriminately into a crowd. Um, and to the extent reasonably possible should be targeted to specific imminent threats and to respond to specific acts of violence or, or destruction of property. Right, so, so they went through and they really just clarified a bunch of these like specific points. And these are a bunch of things that Black Lives Matter and ACLU were asking for when they filed that um, you know, motion for contempt last month. Like there's not, they asked for a bunch of other stuff too, but these were a bunch of things. So it sounds like they went back and forth and they found like some so reasonable the, language. The ACLU went back and forth with the city and they made- With the city, yeah, yeah. So the city, the city the, the Seattle Police Department through, I guess, the city attorney has been negotiating behind the scenes with the ACLU, and they've come to this agreement, which they then presented to Judge Jones. Judge Jones read over it and now has signed it. Yep, within about half an hour, Judge Jones had, had signed it and was out the door. Right, and so, like, when, when does this take effect? It should take effect immediately. Judge, the judge has signed it, so that should, that should take effect basically right now. Wow. Is there anything else people should know about this ruling today or what to expect next? Well, th so, um, so, you know, let's recall what's going on with Judge Robart, right? So, so there was this uh, crowd control ban ordinance that the city council passed. The DOJ uh, said, hey, this violates a consent decree because you didn't go through the whole consent decree process. And it reads on a bunch of the policies that we worked really hard on. Judge Robart agreed and put a temporary restraining order on that. Um, and it looks like what's going to happen with that is that restraining order is going to get extended to mid to late September. And at the end of this week, the OPA, the Office of Inspector General, and the CPC are going to issue their recommendations for the city as to what the crowd control weapon policy should be, 
right? And at that point, the city can respond to it, the DOJ can respond to that, the judge can look over all those responses in early September. And so before the, you know, before that order, uh, you know, expires, the judge will have time to say, okay, well, I've read what everybody thinks about this now and the recommendations of our experts. And so here's how I think we should go forward. For what, what's happened today is still temporary. It's going into, into play. Yeah. Now, and, but it's and, it, and, it, and it explicitly says in there that they're staying the proceedings for the Black Lives Matter ACLU case until Robart rules and what he wants to do about that ordinance. 